And gents, I'm an American. I'm all about freedom. Freedom! That being said, over at the Sephora website, I got 329 options when it comes to fragrances. And over on the Ulta website, it's a little bit better. I'm only overwhelmed with 233 options. But seriously, gents, it's cool to have choices, but it can be overwhelming if you have too many. So today I want to cut through the complexity and talk about some of the best new releases that you can find either at Ulta or Sephora. Now, I bring up these two stores because they're common. You can walk in, you can smell the fragrances before you buy. They've both got good websites and you can rest assured that the fragrances you're getting from them are the real deal. Yes, believe it or not, there is an industry out there of counterfeit fragrances because these things can go for a lot of money. Now, does that mean you shouldn't buy fragrances from discounters and other online retailers? Of course not. In fact, over at Sephora or Ulta, you won't find some of the best niche fragrances out there. So, where do I shop? More about that in a second. No, first, I want to highlight a house that I have not given much love to in the past, but has recently come out with some pretty darn good fragrances. And that house is Ralph Lauren. Now, for the longest time, they've been resting on their laurels. They've had two great fragrances that have carried the house for years. Polo Green and Polo Red. Now, occasionally, they would have a flash of brilliance. But more often than not, they would just put out things that are just bleh. Well, I have to give them credit. They did well with the Ralph's Club line. The EDP was good. The Parfum was great. But the Elixir was amazing. Now, as the name implies, this is a darker, heavier, richer fragrance. Perfect for the fall, winter, or spring. I personally really enjoy it. It's got solid longevity, and I've recommended it before. But the one I want to talk about is, for me, one that slipped through the cracks. I'm talking about the Polo Red Parfum. Now, the original Polo Red is a great fragrance, but this Parfum is a modern interpretation. And if you want a sweet, fruity, easy to wear fragrance for a young man or an older man who's young at heart, gents, I'm telling you, this is a no-brainer pick. Now, at the top, we got the blood orange, bergamot, and pink pepper. In the middle, absinthe, lavender, and orris. And at the base, musk, cedar, and opinox. A lot of people say it reminds them of the EDP. For me, that one's a little bit darker. This one is going to be more of a summer wear. And with just a touch of spice, this is a fun fragrance to wear. And speaking of fun, my love for Ralph Lauren doesn't stop there. Let's talk about Polo 67. If you want a clean, soft, citrus top, a tata floor with just a bit of earth at the base, this could be the perfect summer scent for you. At the top, we got bergamot, pineapple, lemon. In the middle, juniper, sage, rosehip. And at the base, vetiver, goldenrod, and patchouli. Now, is this going to win any awards for originality? No, but it's fun, it's vibrant, it's youthful, and it's easy to find. Now, if you like that last scent profile, but you want something that is going to last longer and comes from a higher-end house, then check out Yves Saint Laurent's myself. So straight up, gents, this fragrance has become super popular. It's the right time of the year, and it's an easy-to-wear, somewhat generic, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it's more just crowd-pleasing. Everybody loves it. Everybody, you know what? I've smelled this before. I just like it kind of fragrance. Now, personally, I think crowd-pleasing fragrances like this are great because they make solid gifts, and if you want to smell good without offending anyone, well, you got an easy choice. But if that's your goal and you want something that smells a little bit higher and a little bit more unique, check out Wise New Elixir. This is a brand new release from Yves Saint and it's a perfect four-season fragrance with a really simple note breakout of lavender at the top, geranium in the middle, and frankincense and oud at the base. Now, what if you already own a Y fragrance? In that case, I would say you want to skip this one because the elixir, even though it's a great fragrance, it's very similar to the Y EDP, just a little bit stronger. Not as strong as I would have liked to have seen it, but uh, yeah, it's basically just a souped up version of this one. Now, earlier I talked about niche fragrances. This one right here is the latest release by Parfums de Marly, Perseus, and this is a beautiful summer scent. It's got top notes of grapefruit, bergamot, black currant, in the middle, green mandarin, vetiver, geranium, at the base, dry wood, cashmere, and ambergris. To me, when I smell this, this is a beast mode version of Terre de Mez's Eau Givray, which is a great fragrance in of itself. That being said, the dry down is muskier, it's sweeter, and I think that this one is going to get you a lot more compliments. But here's the deal. This fragrance, you're not going to find it at Ulta, you're not going to find it at Sephora. Where are you going to find it? at Max Aroma. Now, gents, down in the description of today's video, I'm going to link over to Max Aroma because if you go over there, you are going to be able to find some of the best niche fragrances out there. Fragrances like Oman Luxury's Wanderlust. Now, straight up, gents, this fragrance is green. I mean, when you look at the Accords, it says it's woody. You got citrus, fruity, aromatic, fresh spice, a bit of amber and florals at the base. But the note that everyone picks up is a fresh, realistic green fig. But if that sounds too different for you, if you want something that's just going to get you compliments, something you can wear on a date, check out History's Swiss Praline. This is a sweet, vanilla, warm, spicy, cinnamon, amber, rum fragrance. And as the name implies, has a very distinct 
praline note with a bit of sandalwood at the base. This is a beautifully crafted sweet fragrance that is perfect for going out and getting in close. Now gents, all those niche fragrances and more can be found over at Max Aroma. That being said, for many years with my own money, I've bought many fragrances from Max Aroma and I love the way that these guys ship, the way they package and how they get access to some of the best fragrances out there. So gents, take advantage of the deal I got for you. Use that link in the description to make sure you get the best deal on the web. Now these next two fragrances don't have much in common except for the important fact that they are both the third and latest releases from their respective lines. They're also arguably the best of the bunch. So first up, let's talk about Burberry Hero Parfum. Now Burberry's been busy the last few years taking my money. They came out with the EDT, they came out with the EDP, now they just came out with the Parfum in 2024. And as you can see from this chart here, gentlemen, they have kept it consistent, getting stronger, more intense, and darker as they strengthen the formula. That being said, the Parfum at its heart is what all Hero fragrances have been, crowd-pleasing, easy-to-wear fragrances that Burberry knows are going to sell. So, you can pull this off the heat, you can pull this off the cold. This is an easy-wear, four-season fragrance that, uh, yeah, would make a great gift. And again, like most of the fragrances in today's video, you can walk into Ulta, you can walk into Sephora, and you can try it for yourself. Now, the K story is a little bit more complex. The original K, when it came out, it was panned. Nobody liked it. I always felt it was a misnaming. It's an okay fragrance. It's not going to win any awards for originality, but I thought this was an easy office wear that you didn't have to think about. The EDP came out and was much better received. It was stronger, had more projection, and I thought it was a little bit spicier. The Intense is even better. And if you know the backstory, apparently Dolce & Gabbana took back control of their fragrances. They even got like a metal lid on this one. So overall, everyone's believing the quality has stepped up at this house and this is reflected. That being said, if you already have the EDP, if you have the EDT, I'm sorry, but no, if you got the EDP, this is going to be, you know, ex I, I don't think you need to upgrade. Just simply put on a little bit more. They are very similar. That being said, if this is your first K fragrance, then jump for the intense. Right there at the top, you're going to see saffron, then you're going to see in the middle fig and at the base leather. Now, don't be confused by those notes. That leather is not overpowering. I get fresh, clean, spicy, very similar to the EDP, but with more power and more projection. So yeah, if you're just going to choose one in the K line, this is the one to go with. Unless you want a boring office scent, then I guess go with the EDT. Now, a couple minutes ago, I mentioned green fragrances. And some of you guys are probably thinking, well, Antonio, do green fragrances always come in green bottles? Not exactly, but sometimes. Now, by green, what they mean is earthy. So that can mean a lot of different things, but in general, it's going to be a natural smell. Something that you would pick up in a garden, maybe something that you would pick up going through tall grass. Green fragrances in general are considered very masculine. Yes, you're going to have woods and florals, which are right next to it, but we're going to see moss. We're going to see grasses like vetiver. We're going to have some fragrances that have notes that literally smell like dirt. Uh, right here, we've got Bulgari's Terra Essence, which is relatively new and a beautiful fragrance. But yes, it does have a little bit of an earthy dirt note to it. And this other fragrance I held up was Hermes's H24, which has a very strong moss note in it. But no, the one I want to highlight today is brand new and has a very long, confusing name. It's Valentino Umo's Born in Roma Green Stravaganza. Now, despite that name, the notes here are actually really simple. At the top, we got Calabrian Bergamot, in the middle, coffee, and at the base, vetiver. Now, I don't pick up the coffee much, but I do pick up that citrus at the top and then at that base, this is a solid classic vetiver fragrance. That being said, because of that well-blended coffee note, it's not a one-dimensional vetiver. So if you have something like Tom Ford's, you know, vetiver, the parfum or the EDP, this one is going to be very different despite having such similar notes. And it's also worth mentioning compared to all the other Valentino flankers, this one is very different. And as that it's perfect for hot weather, hey, when you go into Ulta, you go into Sephora, this is one you definitely want to get your nose on because it's going to be different than anything else you're smelling. And speaking of moss notes, I want to talk about a fragrance I was really surprised it was leveraging that note, and that is Azaro's The Most Wanted intense. Now, I have most of the Azaro Wanted line. Pretty much, if it looks like a revolver, I have got that fragrance. I like them. They're sweet, fun, youthful, inexpensive clubbing fragrances. Not that I'm going out and using them, but this one was different. Now, the notes, this is where it gets interesting. We got bergamot at the top, no surprise. Lavender in the middle, but get this for a base combination. Liquor and moss. You know, I was surprised, and you know what it reminds me of? Right here, Myself by Yves Saint Laurent, except less expensive and a little bit more fun. So, if you see this in Sephora, if you see it in Ulta, Check it out. Get your nose on it. This one is a fun discovery you just might love. Now, what about that Coach fragrance I held up earlier? Yeah, the Coach Green. This is Coach's newest release. And yes, it's a green fragrance. 
but it's on the entirely different side of the spectrum. This one right here, it's got kiwi at the top, so very sweet, and it has a moss note, hence why it's in the green fragrances. Now, in addition to the kiwi there at the top, you've also got bergamot in the middle, rosemary, geranium, and at the base, cedar, and as mentioned, moss. Now, you're probably wondering, who in the world wants to smell like moss? Nobody, but, well, maybe there's somebody out there, but for the majority of us, that moss note, what it tells me is that it's going to project a bit more. This is a note that usually builds up other notes. And believe it or not, this fragrance reminds a lot of people of a more subdued, not nearly as obnoxious, Sauvage or even Luna Rosa Prada uh, Carbon. So yeah, if you thought these were too much in your face, you want something that's at a better price and smells great, check out Coach's Green, a solid underrated pick. Now, gents, throughout this video, you have seen a ton of infographics. If you want them all in one place, down in the description of today's video, I'm linking over to our free community over on school. It's called the Brotherhood of Scent. It's absolutely free. I created it for you so you can go in there and discover the science of scent. Seriously, we got free classrooms in there, great discussion, and I'm giving away half of my fragrance collection right now, which I'll admit I was kind of scared to do, but then I realized I've got more than I will ever wear in my entire life and I'd rather send it to you guys. So gents, use that link in the description of today's video and join the Brotherhood of Scent today. Now, no list would be complete without an aquatic. So let's talk about Paco Rabanne's Invictus Parfum. Oh, and don't worry about Aqua Di Joe. I got it covered here in a couple minutes. But I need to cover Invictus because this latest parfum is really nice. And I know I've got pretty much the entire Invictus line back here. I don't talk about them a lot in my videos because most of them are very synthetic smelling. They're nice, but they usually don't beat out most of the other fragrances I want to talk about. Well, that seems to be history because this new parfum version is smooth. Now, at the top, we got marine lavender and pink pepper. In the middle, soap, violet leaf, and myrtle. At the base, cashmere on, musk, and sandalwood. If you like the original Invictus, if you like the newer Invictus Legend, you felt that those were pretty good, this is going to blow you away because it's smoother, it's cleaner, it's less synthetic, and I think they did a great job. It's got good longevity and is a solid pickup. I've seen it described as rich, radiant, dense, playful, all of that, and uh, yeah, this is a beautiful fragrance. Good job, Paco Rabanne. And speaking of doing a good job, let's keep it rolling with Carolina Herrera's latest release, Bad Boy Cobalt Elixir. Now, I thought the original Cobalt was a fine fragrance. Some people found certain notes off-putting. I really liked it, especially the plum note. Well, with the Elixir, they've made it darker. They've made it richer up there at the top. We've got black pepper and sage in the middle, truffle and woods, and at the base, vanilla and frankincense. So with that, you may be wondering, is it similar to the original? The answer is yes. The DNA is there, but uh, it's only like half of it because this one is amped up. It's stronger. It's fresher, yet it's still a little bit animalistic. And I do miss the plum, but this one is unique and it's good, yet it still feels feels like it's part of the bad boy lineup. Earthy strong with good projection. This one is just fun. Yeah, I'm going to keep this one to myself. Don't go buy this one. No, this one's all mine. And speaking of fragrances that are all mine, guys, I got pretty much all the Aqua Digios and I went through and I broke it out for you because so many of you guys walk into a store and you're like, Antonio, I hear Aqua Digios good, but I just don't know which one to buy. Guys, if that is you or you know somebody who needs to grab an Aqua Digio this summer, but they're trying to figure out which one to buy, I've created a simple guide for you right here. Go check it out. I had fun with this video. I think you'll enjoy it. Boom, right here. Oh yeah.